A sudden rise to fame always feels magical from the outside. A game appears in people's feeds, gains momentum with surprising speed and gives the impression that something extraordinary is happening in a single moment. Many viewers assume that a single spark has caused everything. It's a post, a reaction or maybe just luck. But when you look closely at how these stories form, the picture changes. The rise begins long before that moment. It grows quietly through interactions so small they rarely feel important at the time. But those early movements shape the path more than the final burst ever does. And that hidden progression is easy to forget about because it never asks for attention. It forms in corners and spaces where very few people are watching. And yet, that quiet foundation is what gives the game enough strength to break through the noise. And once you understand how that foundation forms, overnight success loses its mystery. A game's earliest movements often happen when only a handful of people are aware it exists. Someone encounters a moment during development that wasn't planned, maybe a player reacts to something unexpected during a test, or maybe even a stranger that pauses at a clip and stares at it longer than intended. And those moments come together without any dramatic flair. They feel so small and almost forgettable, but even so they mark the beginning of a change. Not because big large numbers are there or high visibility, but because they show the game has started to shape a response instead of the players. And that early stage rarely feels like anything big or any growth. It feels like nothing at all. But beneath the surface, that's the first thread of attachment that is getting formed. Before a game becomes popular, it reaches someone who has to experience it in a way that leaves a trace behind. Maybe that's a short moment that catches their attention. They notice something that they have never seen before, or maybe something familiar that is handled with more care than they expected. That moment doesn't need to be something big, it just has to be very genuine. Often that viewer doesn't even realize that moment mattered, but life continues without any interruption. But at some point later, that moment returns to their thoughts. It doesn't have to announce itself, it just simply quietly slips into their head, like reminding them of an image, a sound or a feeling that they didn't expect to remember. That quiet return reveals that connection that has been formed a while back, and that connection doesn't leave easily. A person might watch a small clip of gameplay and yet their mind begins to create these parts that they didn't see. It builds a version of a world behind the moment. It invents what controls might feel like and it guesses rules based off a single hint. And this is why gaming worlds feel personal, because it came from the viewer rather than the developer. When someone starts imagining a game before playing it, interest deepens without any effort, there is no pressure from the outside and the curiosity can grow from the viewer. This stage is where the hook forms, not through any marketing or slogans, but through imagination sparked in that moment by a viewer. Curiosity often shows up when no one expects it. It's a person who might remember the game during a walk, while commuting or while they're talking about something unrelated. They might scroll through dozens of posts and suddenly they wonder what happened to that one clip from earlier. And that small return is the start of a long-term relationship with your game. A viewer might not act on the curiosity right away, but the thought continues to drift back into the place on its own. Each return reinforces that memory and makes it easier to recall. Games that create these lingering thoughts gain strength without any active promotion. And that's the beauty of indie games. A game doesn't grow because people constantly talk about it. It grows because they can't quite forget about it. And creators spend so much time watching their own footage and reading their audience reactions that they've developed almost an instinct for those moments that might resonate with them. When they encounter a game that has genuine emotion, maybe it's surprise, tension, relief, or maybe even it's delight, they sense an opportunity. It's like a sense, it doesn't feel calculated, it's almost immediate. A creator doesn't need a full understanding of your game. A single moment can be enough for them to make them curious. If they sense that the game might reveal something interesting once the camera is rolling, they can take the next step. The exploration becomes part of the game's growth. The audience responds to that moment. 
and the game begins to stretch into larger spaces. At this stage, the game's world starts shaping reactions and cannot be duplicated anywhere else. And that's where groups of people begin discussing the game in scattered places across the internet. Maybe someone mentions a moment that caught their attention and someone else notices a detail that the first person has missed. They share thoughts not because they plan to build a community, but because the moment stayed with them. And over time, these small exchanges create a shared understanding among the people who were strangers before. They begin to recognize familiar elements in each other's clips or interpretations. The game becomes a place where they can return to even if they aren't playing it yet. A group like this doesn't feel like a community in the beginning. It feels like a few people who notice the same things, but those small actions that spark becomes a center for something that grows slowly and steadily and without any support. Some games just leave impressions long after the last session has ended. A game might return days later, maybe it's a split second decision, a strange detail in a world or an unexpected reaction from the game's systems. These impressions shape memories that feel more personal. A player might think about the game without meaning to. They might talk about it with someone who has never played it. A small part of the world slips into their thoughts and remains there, waiting for a reason to surface again. And that quiet memory is so powerful because it ties the player to the game in a way that doesn't depend on constant updates or external pressure. Games that create these internal memories tend to survive way longer than the initial moment. They stay present even when everything else moves on. And as different groups form attachments to the game, the build-up becomes almost impossible to contain. The game appears in places that once had no connection to it. People begin recognizing its tone or imagery, even if they haven't played it. And maybe even friends bring it up in conversations like they had nothing to do with gaming. The world starts to shift around the game in a subtle but noticeable way. Eventually, that movement reaches a threshold. That game crosses into widespread awareness. From the outside it feels like that rise is happening in a single day, but within the early circles the rise feels natural, like a result of everything that came before. The reactions, the curiosity, the quiet discussions, and maybe the memories. A breakout never appears suddenly, it emerges from countless small steps that are formed along the way long before anyone noticed them. And understanding that process is changing how you can create games. You begin to see that large moments are not the foundation for attention, but the smaller ones are. Not because they shout the loudest, but because they settle into the mind in a way that feels honest. A single moment that feels true, that can carry more weight than the entire marketing plan ever could. If a player feels something real, that feeling spreads through their world in quiet ways. Someone else catches the same feeling and the chain continues. Not through forcing, not through marketing, but through internal connections. When you build a game, the goal shouldn't be chasing visibility. Your goal should be creating those moments that matter enough to be remembered. And now that you heard this, there's something I'd like to know from you. Has a game ever given you a small moment that stayed in your mind far longer than you expected? Maybe that's even your own game, a moment that you didn't plan to remember and yet it followed you anyway? Your answer might help others to understand what moments can hold true weight. If you want to support the work I'm doing, please feel free to subscribe and wishlist Treasure Drift on Steam. And with that, I hope I see you in the next one.